Welcome back. This is episode 162. In this episode, I want to talk asset allocation and specifically why you should be reviewing it and how you can determine your asset allocation if you don't know what yours is. And as a reminder, if you're listening to this, please head over to YouTube and search Retire with Ryan podcast. If you could then subscribe to my channel, that'd be greatly appreciated. Once you go there, you'll see a number of helpful videos as well as many past podcast episodes. And again, I would appreciate it if you could subscribe. And if you're watching, if you could also subscribe, that'd be greatly appreciated. So if you've watched some of my videos or listened to past podcasts, you know how important I think asset allocation is. And if you don't know what that means, let me just remind you. So asset allocation is the breakdown of your portfolio between the five main asset classes. Now we have uh, the basic ones of cash, stocks, and bonds. I'm sure you're all familiar with that. And then the other two of real estate and commodities. So those are the five main asset classes. And why that is, that is important is because you could then further break these five asset classes down into one of two groups, one being your more safe Um, asset classes, and that would be cash or bonds, and the other being your more risky or growth-oriented asset classes of stocks, commodities, and real estate. And that breakdown between how much you have in the safe asset allocation um, classes versus the uh, growth or risky determines what your potential growth in your portfolio is, but also the potential fluctuation. And I find for meeting with Uh, prospective clients and talking with people that a lot of people don't know what their asset allocation is. I'll have people tell me things like, well, I'm a conservative investor. And then we'll look at their asset allocation and we'll find out that they're 95% invested in the risky asset classes. Now, I wouldn't consider that to be a conservative investor. Uh, Maybe they could have been 100%. um, And maybe in their mind, that's, that's aggressive. But the point being that the closer you get to retirement, the more conservative you generally want to be. If you're in your 30s or your 40s, it's certainly fine to have all of your investments in the risky asset classes of stocks, commodities, and real estate. If you want to maximize your return, that's probably a good idea. But the closer you get to to your 50s and 60s, that's where you want to start taking some money and putting it aside into the uh, safe asset classes of bonds and cash to protect some of your money. Now, we've had a very good start to the first half of this year. The S&P 500 uh, gained about 16% through the first half of 2023. The NASDAQ had a phenomenal return of almost 40%, and foreign markets are up about 10%. Now, this is following 2022, which was a very bad year for the stock market. But the good news is that if you didn't sell out of your portfolio, provided you still own some quality investments that have done well this year, chances are that you're probably close to where you were before 2022 began, which is as of the end of 2021. You're kind of back to where we were or where you were most likely. So now you know that I don't believe in trying to time the stock market, meaning that I don't believe you should try to predict the top and the bottom. It's very hard to do. And then to really uh, take advantage of that would be, if you think you can predict that, to be jumping in and out of the market. I don't think that's a great idea. Studies show that you're more likely to miss out on upside than you are to protect downside. But why I'm mentioning this is that because we've had such a good year in 2022 so far, it's probably a good idea that you review your asset allocation to make a determination if you need to make any changes since you've gotten back a lot of the money that you probably lost in 2021. Now, everyone is different. Everyone has their own asset allocation. There's a lot of rules of thumb out there uh, as far as what you should have in stocks versus bonds, You know, depending on your age, but you really need to find that out on your own. And if you're unsure how to do that, you can always go back and listen to episode 83, which is uh, called, What is the Ideal Asset Allocation in Retirement? where I take a deeper dive into some steps that you can take to actually determine this, uh, the right asset allocation for you. So uh, it's a good thing to go back and listen to that. Go to retirewithryan.com forward slash podcast forward slash 83 to check that out. So again, as I mentioned earlier, if you're getting close to retiring, maybe you're going to retire in the next year or the next couple years. It's probably not a bad idea if you don't know what your asset allocation is or you don't have a target asset allocation 
to go back and listen to episode 83 and also follow some of the additional steps that I'm going to talk about. So um, there's a couple different ways that you could find this out. Option one is that if you have your money in a 401k or an investment company that provides your asset allocation, then they're going to do most of the work for you. Some 401k providers on your statement will give you a breakdown of what your asset allocation is. And I'm not talking about the product breakdown. Some of them will tell you how much you have in mutual funds versus stocks versus cash. That's not your asset allocation because some mutual funds could be invested in bonds. Some could be invested in cash. Some could be invested in stocks. So you really need to dive deeper, kind of look under the hood and know what that is. So some of these companies are doing it for you. Maybe it's on your statement. If not, you can always log in and you can go online and you can find that out. Now, the second option is that if it's either not provided for you or maybe you have a lot of different statements or a lot, I should say, a lot of different investment accounts at different places, well, you're going to need to do a little bit more work. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to look up um, each one of your investments and you're going to want to categorize it. So you can do this however you want. It's probably best to do this some in Excel uh, or some online way so that you can track it. So in Excel, you'd create a file, you'd list out each um, investment that you own, you'd list out its symbol, and then you'd put a category for the, for the asset classes, right? So you're, it, it would either be a stock, cash, a uh, bond, real estate, or commodity. And you'll, you'll categorize every one of your investments that way so that you could then use Excel to then calculate for you what the breakdown is. So if you were to put all of your stocks uh, in one category or stock funds, you could then use Excel to calculate how much that breakdown is, or you could just add it up. So if you found, let's just say you had a $100,000 portfolio, uh, $100,000 and 30,000 were in bonds or bond funds, you divide 30,000 by 100,000, that gives you 30%. So that's how you can do it yourself, or you can use Excel to help you do it. Now, as far as looking up each fund or investment, you can do that a couple different ways. You could use Google. You could just type in the fund symbol. Sometimes Google right away will tell you what that is. If not, you could go to the investment company's website. Every mutual fund uh, has an investment company that's managing it. You could go to their website and then on their information, their fact sheet, or even right on their website, they would tell you, okay, XYZ you know, growth fund is a stock fund so that you can categorize it. Or you can also use Morningstar. If you go to Morningstar.com, you can get a lot of free information by typing in an investment symbol, and it'll give you the breakdown. If um, you have just one fund or a couple funds, it's going to be easier versus if you have you know, 15 or 20 funds. But that's part of the work that needs to be done. And if you have one fund, something like a target date fund, that would be easy. Again, you'd need to either use Morningstar to figure out the breakdown or go to that investment company's website. Now, there are also a third option would be there are tools out there that will do this for you. Most of those tools, however, are not free. You can explore a little bit. I tried searching on Google. I typed in free asset allocation tool to see what I could come up with, and I didn't find a lot. Most of them either wanted me to enter in my email address or sign up for something. Um, so I didn't, I didn't find anything I could recommend. But again, I mentioned Morningstar. Morningstar has a tool where if you have a lot of different mutual funds and you don't want to go through the work, uh, I'm not sure about this, but you might be able to sign up for a free trial of their web website uh, beyond what just the free stuff is that I was saying you can get where you could enter in all your holdings and it would, ca it would calculate your asset allocation. Um, or there might be other websites out there. I'm not really sure. Um, and the last way would be this is where a financial advisor can really help you because they're experienced in knowing where to find this information. And um, a lot of us have tools, like I pay for some different tools that help me put in all my clients' investment holdings into them so that if a client has a lot of different holdings, you know, let's say they had 50 holdings, we could put them all in there and the tool will calculate what the asset allocation is. Uh, I also have the ability to link things up where Rather than typing everything in, a client could link up their account and then we could just pull that information in. So there are some ways that you could potentially do this, but whether you do it the long way and you calculate everything out, um, or maybe your 401k or your investment company does it for you, the point is that you want to find out what this asset allocation is because 
from my experience, a lot of people don't know, and they you might have a different idea in your mind of what you're you're actually invested in. And last year might have shown that to you. If you had a large decline in your portfolio and you weren't expecting it, you thought you were conservatively invested. Well, it's probably a good idea to check that because if we do have a repeat of 2021, which at some point we will, because that's just how investing goes. There's always going to be cycles. Things go up, things go down. But you know, over the long term, generally the trend is up. But if you're close to retiring, it's probably not a not a bad idea to reassess your asset allocation, figure out where you are, does that need to change, and now is a good time when things are up if you're going to make any changes to go ahead and do that. So again, consider going back and listening to episode 83 to get a better handle on how you might determine what your asset allocation is. Or if you need help, you can always reach out to me or I would suggest um, another fee-only financial planner. That's going to be your best bet as far as getting help with this. So as always, if you have a listener question, feel free to go to retirewithryan.com and list your listener question, and we'll consider that for a future episode. Have a great week. And I look forward to talking to you next Wednesday. Take care.